Back in Las Vegas with our executives here on Open Court. Uh, obviously, big part of your jobs is dealing with a, a head coach, hiring, firing a head coach. What, what disagreements will doom a relationship with a head coach, and what can you live with? That's for me? I'm asking you. Matt? Oh, ultimately, you know, a head coach, generally speaking, I'm, I was a coach, so, and I, you know, grow, grew up under a head coach. So um, they want to know what the path is. They want to know what the drill is. Um, if it's a short term or, or a long term, um, security obviously is extremely important. Um, and you know, give them give them the cards. Deal deal them in. Let them know you know the truth, whether it's not pretty or whether it's you know championship caliber. Um, we're going through a little retool right now, you know, and and I can tell you that Rick and I go way back. You know, we shared the same prep school, and you know, Rick was my first and only choice when we were, you know, looking for a coach. Um, and I think that relationship, uh, you know, obviously with Mark being the triad of decision making, you know, we're in it for the long haul. And I think as long as you're honest and truthful with your head coach, generally speaking, you know, um, he'll be, he'll, he'll buy into the program. I, I think the, the coach has the hardest job. You know, I think, uh, you know, he's right there on the court. You know, he has the player's attention. Uh, the media, um, the decision making, and I, I think he's right, the communication and, and making sure the coach knows that he's supported. I think that's very, very important. And, you know, being honest with them and, you know, after the tough losses, you know, just going in there talking to him and, you know, making him feel like, you know, you're not in this alone. And I think uh, a lot of times, you know, just looking and seeing, you know, I think that sometimes the communication isn't there and I think, you're not always going to agree, but I think you have to be able to talk it out. I think you've got to be able to find a common path. I always say this. It is a relationship, unfortunately, that's built to fail because coach loses a game, huddles with his staff, and says, I, I don't know how we're supposed to win with these guys. I mean, what, what, <laughs> can't, can't win with these guys. And then you walk in the room and go, what, what, did, you, what did you say about the players? <laughs> and, then, and then the GM says, well, if you'd play, you know, you got so-and-so playing the three. He's a two. I drafted him as a two. So... <clears throat> You've got this disconnect that's inherent and preys upon our weaknesses as people. Because how many of us, when things get difficult, look in the mirror instead of looking out the window and say, that one's on me. I didn't give the guy the right roster. Or a coach that sits back and says, you know what? I am not playing this guy right. Especially in the heat of adversity when you feel the media, the public descending upon you and you already are competitive and already are struggling because you lost. That's when we're at our worst. We lost in game seven of the finals. That could have, that can really derail things. Um, we could have, first thing Steve says when we got back in, in the, at game seven when we lost to Cleveland in his coach's office was, you know, I could have done some things differently. Like that is, that's a self-awareness. And then I say, well, you know, I didn't give you much. You know, so, so it's a camaraderie, but like a marriage, like anything, you need to work at it. You leave it alone, it, it spirals. You don't touch that relationship, it spirals. Um, but when it's good, Somebody got a job, a friend of mine was becoming a GM or asked me a question. I said, go to, go to he, he said, I've got a new coach or something. I said, go to dinner with the coach and, and, and lay out one rule. You can't talk about basketball. You know, many of us don't even know what our coaches got kids, where they live, how they grew up. It's just winning, winning, winning. Um, that's not how you build relationships. Hmm. I, I work with Steve, who you probably know, and because of what he's gone through, I went through some things the better your connection, the more you can stomach the losing. When you lose, you find out who someone is. And in this profession, when you're talking about job security, you're talking about getting hammered in the media, you're talking about paranoia, you're talking about who's coming to get you, and then add to it, you're just a competitive human being, you better have some good fabric in that relationship. So many things are trying to screw that relationship up. So many things are trying to hurt that relationship. You have to protect that coach relationship like a marriage. And the sad thing is you're almost with this person more than your wife, which is pathetic. <laughs> but it's, it's really that close of a relationship if you really want it to work. Uh, I want to pivot to one more topic as we get here toward the near the end of the show, and that's media leaks. There, there are more media covering the NBA than at any point in the league's history, obviously. And I want to start with Andy because you, the Miami Heat, as far as I can tell, are the least leaky team in the league. 
how much do, do you and Pat Riley and, and everybody else concern yourself with keeping things in-house, and how important is that to you? You know the best way to keep a secret? Don't tell anybody. Just don't tell, you know, limit the scope of how much information you put out. Keep the circle small of the different people that, that know the information that you have. And you have to respect that at the end of the day, the people that you're sharing it with respect that they don't want the information out because so many people feel like they get rewards from getting the information out. And I think you have to be you know, genuine with your relationship with the media. They're the ones you're selling. Ultimately, they're the ones who are the ambassadors to, your, to, to the public. They're explaining what's going on. So I think you have to be careful of, you know, I don't think you view the media as an enemy. I think you don't have to be very, very careful when you're viewing them and saying, I'm a, you know, you know, not be respectful of them or misleading or lying, you know, to, to them. Just respectful of what the relationship is. But at the end of the day, our job is to make the choices, not to necessarily let someone get, you know, advanced information on the choice. And that's what our, our job is, and that has to be respected by everybody who has access to the information. Simply, don't tell anybody. My parents find not, virtually nothing, every, virtually everything that's ever happened, my parents found out when it got announced. <laughs> Uh, they have to read the press release. They get the pre they get the press release <laughs> to see what happened and say what's going on. I don't just like you know talk about it. You know, well, what's first world of Fight Club? Don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> well, what about with you guys? Is yeah, it, I mean, is it I a think, priority? Do you care? Do you? Well, I think the leaks generally come around teams I've noticed that have like a lot of transition and turmoil. It's the ones that are stable. Obviously, Miami's been stable for a very long time. I think we have. I think the stable teams don't have as many transitional elements of owners and but I actually think the leaks have been better has been my observation but better in what way I think it's less actually like I, I've been I've been happy I've had lots of conversations over the last year and key moments and like none of it's gotten out it's been it's I've noticed it's better it was like really bad when Twitter first exploded on the scene and then now I think it's I think it's a little bit better but have you shared anything with your family <laughs> I do share things. My, my wife knows the CBA really well. Really? <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, she's a huge sports fan, so I'm yeah. lucky. Yeah. She doesn't know as well as Andy, but <laughs> she's, she's trying to get uh, Are you guys done beating up on Bob? Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not Let's yet. get out of here. <laughs> I've got no, good news for you. That yeah. was going to be your answer, Donnie. You know, how many. E pluribus unum, yeah. it is over. Uh, I've got good news. You can have your phones back. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Go. Yeah. Get back to deal making as soon yeah. as you walk out of the room. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Great Thank, you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, that'll do it. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Warren. Not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, that was great. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you for the work. We don't need to pick up above any other Matt. job. I know.